airway management is the process of maintaining ventilation in a patient by using an artificial airway. This ensures that gas exchange can occur by establishing a link between the patient and the ventilator, which is important because we need to make sure that the patient's upper airway is free and clear of foreign substances so that air can flow into and out of the lungs. It goes without saying that this is a very important topic in the field of respiratory care. As a student, you must develop an understanding of the basic concepts to use throughout your career as a respiratory therapist. But even before that, you must know and understand airway management in order to pass the board exams as well. So to help, in this video, we're going to break down a few sample TMC practice questions on this very topic. So, if you're ready, let's get into it. A 61-year-old female patient was just intubated and is now receiving ventilatory support via an oral endotracheal tube. You recommended a chest radiograph in order to confirm proper placement of the tube. Where should the tip of the tube be positioned? A not more than two centimeters above the carina, B, at the same level as the carina, C, level with the fifth cervical vertebrae, or D, between the second and fourth thoracic vertebrae. Do you know the answer? Let's break it down. First and foremost, you absolutely must know the proper position of an endotracheal tube for the TMC exam because you will see questions about it. Just know that there are a few ways to confirm proper placement that you should be familiar with. When looking at a chest x-ray, a properly positioned ET tube should appear about 1.5 inches above the carina, which to be more specific is about four to six centimeters. This means that the tip of the tube will sit between the second and fourth thoracic vertebrae on the x-ray. Another quick and general reference to look at is this. The tube should be inserted about 21 to 24 centimeters at the patient's lip, which you can verify by looking at the markings on the tube. So by looking at the answer choices, we can quickly see that only one option shows that the tube is in the correct place which means that the correct answer has to be D, between the second and fourth thoracic vertebrae. Before we move along to the next question, I just wanted to let you know about our TMC test bank. It's our massive bank of premium practice questions that many students have been using to prepare for and pass the TMC exam. Going through practice questions is by far one of the most effective preparation strategies and that is exactly why so many of our recent students have been successful. Our practice questions cover every topic that you're required to know for the exam, including the topics that unfortunately many students forget to study. If you're interested, we're actually running a temporary promotion that you can take advantage of. Just pause this video and check it out. I'll drop a link right below this video down in the description. A 63-year-old female patient is orally intubated with a size 7 endotracheal tube and is receiving ventilatory support. While attempting to suction the patient with a size 12 catheter, you note that it cannot pass beyond the tip of the tube. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this problem? A. There is a kink in the tube. B. The tube is in the right main stone bronchus. C. The suction catheter is too short or D, the suction catheter size is too large. Do you know the correct answer? Well, let's break it down. After reading the question and answer choices, first we must determine if the right size suction catheter is being used. A quick and simple way to do so is to double the ET tube size and then make it the next size down. For example, the question tells us that the patient has a size seven endotracheal tube. So now we can double that number to get 14. Then we need to take the next smallest catheter size, which would be a size 12. This confirms that a size 12 catheter is the appropriate size for a size seven endotracheal tube. So now looking back at the answer choices, this means that we can rule out C and D automatically. 
In general, whenever you are unable to pass a suction catheter down the ET tube, it usually indicates that there is some type of obstruction. And the most common types include mucus plugs, kinking, or when the patient is biting the tube. Even if the tube is in the right mainstem bronchus, you should still be able to pass the suction catheter beyond the tip of the tube. So by reading the question carefully and using our knowledge of endotracheal tubes and suction catheters, we could determine that the correct answer has to be A. There is a kink in the tube. If you're enjoying this video so far, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I really do appreciate it more than you know. Also, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. But we're not done yet. Let's break down another practice question. What purpose does the pilot balloon of an endotracheal or tracheostomy tube serve during intubation and airway management? A. To minimize mucosal trauma during insertion. B. To protect the airway against aspiration. C. To monitor cuff integrity and pressure or D, to help with proper tube positioning. Do you know the answer? Well, let's break it down. The cuff of an endotracheal and tracheostomy tube is designed to help seal the airway for protection and facilitate positive pressure ventilation. However, hanging from the cuff is what's known as a pilot balloon, which is used to monitor the cuff's integrity and pressure once the tube is in place. It has a valve in which a syringe is attached for the inflation and deflation of the cuff. This can be done simply by pumping air into the cuff for inflation or removing air to deflate the cuff. You should know that, in general, the pilot balloon is not meant to help with tube positioning, preventing aspiration, or minimizing trauma. So by using what we know about pilot balloons, as well as the process of elimination, we could determine that the correct answer has to be C, to monitor cuff integrity and pressure. Real quick guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. Well, what'd you think about these practice questions? Was it helpful breaking them down in a simplified way? I hope so, and as I always say, definitely try to go through as many of these as possible when preparing for the TMC exam. Even if you don't use our practice questions, this is still a strategy that I recommend for all students. However, if you do want to get access to all of our premium practice questions, definitely consider checking out our TMC test bank. You can still take advantage of the temporary promotion that's going on by using the link below. Also, if you want to get these practice questions and explanations sent straight to your inbox on a daily basis, you can consider signing up for our Practice Questions Pro membership, which costs less than one of those fancy cups of coffee that all the kids are drinking these days. It's never been easier. All you have to do is sign up and we'll send the practice questions to your email address each and every day. Small tidbits of knowledge over time can add up to huge results. I'll drop a link to that as well right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.